identify where we can change. We don't all have to change everything, but what we have to do is recognize that the field of communications we're in is a life and death issue. It's not enough just to say we can do delightful things. This is the most influential piece of design in my lifetime. This horrid piece of information design that caused the war in Iraq, that caused the United States not to sign the Kyoto Accord, that caused condoms not to be shipped by the U.S. government to Africa for eight years. And I'm, I'm, I'm just to show that I'm fair to both sides, but here's a, four years later, what kind of ballots do they have? This is a ballot in Ohio four years later. If you wanted to re-elect George Bush, George W., you had to mark a X is four way up here. But if you wanted to vote for John Kerry, this six is right near, near to your six. Now in Canada, we have one ballot design for everyone. The AIGA, which is the professional organization for design in the United States, after all this trouble, decided to develop a better ballot. A ballot that's as good as used in Europe or Canada or Australia. And this is what they came up with, something that's clear and consistent. The same ballots can be used everywhere in the country, and yet only six states picked it up in the president in the most recent presidential election. I took this photograph last night on Fourth Avenue. Just a few blocks from here. Green and red. Ah. Now, did a little bit of research. Found out that uh, over eight percent of the men in Virginia have some level of color blindness. I also discovered that the, most, the greatest cause of accidental death in Virginia are traffic accidents. This is what these lights look like if I've just taken the color out of them. This is what these lights look like at night if you're completely colorblind. The only distinction between them is the level of the light, and of course that's difficult to see. Can we not do that? This is a type of uh, traffic light that is being tested in the province of Quebec and Canada, as I learned last night from, uh, from Curtis. Apparently they're in Minnesota and Wisconsin as well. Now, it's the same idea, except there's two reds, and the reds are square, rather than circles. So not using just color as a primary, a primary design cue, we're using color, but we're also using shape and frequency. That is, there's two rather than one. And what we find is everyone loves it. Not just the colored black people, because the, the parallax of seeing the two points from a distance gives you a sense of how far away it is. And, and indeed, because we should all be switching to LED traffic lights anyway, over the next 10 years to save money on energy, it makes sense we should all switch to this type of system. This is simple design. This doesn't cost a lot. So why aren't we changing? The idea that something we design for people with the extremes, helping everyone, is not rare at all. Here's a girl, she's using a technology that's used by quadriplegics so that they can access the internet, and by just sipping and puffing on this tube and moving her neck, she can move the mouse and click. She can surf the web. And it's technologies like these that have made it possible for the greatest revolution in human history. Because in the last 35 years, more human beings have been liberated by information technology than all of the wars and revolutions in human history. We've taken people who couldn't participate in society before, and through clever use of information technology, we have made it possible. And, and we think, well, that's nice. We should take those people with extreme disabilities and, and bring them into our room and you know, maybe that's a three to four or five percent of the population, but most, I guess. But in fact, did the research and discover what is more. In fact, if you're willing, I'd like to do a little experiment together, if you're willing. Um, are you willing to do a little thing? I want to, I'm going to ask you to do something a little different, just vulnerable. I'm going to ask you to identify if you have a disability, just so we can get that. But don't do it yet. I have three of the disabilities I'm going to list off. I'm going to list off a few disabilities. And then I'm going to say, at a certain point, I'm going to say, hey, if you have any of these things and you're comfortable sharing, stand up. Unless you're in a wheelchair. So, so here's my list. Are you colorblind? Do you have a hearing impairment? Do you have any sort of visual impairment? Have you ever had your arm in a cast for more than three days? Do you have trouble seeing the small type on the screen 
from the back of the room. Do you have a problem focusing on my list? <laughs> okay. And I have two of the things I mentioned, and by the time of my presentation, I'll be able to figure out which of those two things I have. So, okay, if you're comfortable, please stand up if you have any of these things. Oh, wow. That's a lot of people. Wait. Oh, and if, oh, I forgot. If you're planning on living beyond the age of 45, stand up as well. Because <laughs> you're going to have eyesight problems, okay? So I want you to look left, like communication professional friends. Look left and look right. And when you're designing an accessible application, an accessible website, an accessible technology, these are the people you are designing for. Not something you're imagining someone hold up in an apartment somewhere. These people, very cool and suavely dressed people, are the people that you're designing. Thank you for, for making yourselves more. Please have a seat.